our investigation. Do you want to straight up rather than saying? Yeah, well, I can, I can just explain that, um, that quilt to you. The quilt is 90 centimetres by 90 centimetres. It's surrounded um, with a pattern all the way around of the black background with the bright coloured musical notes. It's really very, very distinctive. And we've had um, a quilting person have a look at it and they believe that it's a homemade quilt. So clearly somebody has gone to the effort of making that quilt for somebody they care, uh, care about and love. Now, it's possible um, that the person who originally had the quilt given to them or that family may have moved on with their lives and perhaps given the quilt on to somebody else. The quilt may have ended up in an op shop or similar and it could have been given to someone else. But even if that's occurred, it's extremely distinctive and it's impossible to believe that somebody doesn't know who had that quilt. Well, overnight we've had 55 Crime Stopper calls, and to date we're up around 280 Crime Stopper calls being received from South Australia and across the country. I guess in terms of recent cases, that's unprecedented, the level of calls we're getting, um, and we encourage people who think they might know something um, to ring us. We've had calls... Um, not about who owns the quilt, but about quilting um, guilds and quilting associations who might be able to help, and we'll be making contact with those people. So that's 55 calls, basically, since that uh, photo went out in, in the newspaper article? Uh, since last night, yep. Is there anything unique about the fabrics that we use? That, are they quite distinctive, or are they something you could pick up at Spotlight, for example? Yeah, it, it's hard to know where they came from, because a lot of those quilts, I'm told, are made of offcuts and you can buy bags of offcuts specifically for making quilts or you can seek out things and get. So I guess that's hard to know um, the answer to that or where they come from. I am told that what is distinctive from a quilting point of view is that the inside lining appears to be a light coloured polyester material which indicates that it was made for a child and it's um, machine stitched so that it can withstand lots of washing and the like. So as opposed to a hand sewn a quilt, which a lot of quilters do. This one's been sewn. Have you had any luck finding that person that took out the uh, suitcase remains and then left the suitcase on the we, We've had a number of people come forward who have actually seen the contents of the suitcase and not realised what it was. But the actual person who um, emptied the suitcase out, um, we haven't identified that person yet. But as I say, we have had um, someone make contact with us today and that person has seen the suitcase at some point while the contents were still inside. How, if, if at all, can people like that help you? Are they like providing any information in terms of things you didn't know previously? Um, the suitcase is of enormous benefit to know when that suitcase went there and who actually tipped it out. If we can put a date to that, that narrows the focus considerably. Um, and again, the quilt is really important to the investigation because if we identify who that quilt was originally given to, or if it ended up in an op shop, that will take us back to a geographic area, and we'll be able to then work from there out, and I'm sure we'll identify somebody. Again, the little dress, I mean, really distinctive. Um, a little girl wearing that dress, um, people must remember seeing a little girl like that at a party, at a barbecue, at a family get-together, um, even just playing in the yard next door to where you live. Somebody's got to have seen either that dress, that quilt, or have a better idea about the suitcase and the contents. Is there any thought of putting these details out internationally or trying to get into international media, or do you think this is a, an Australian child? Look, at the moment, um, we are proceeding on the basis that it's most likely an Australian child, but um, we've got an open mind as to where we go with the investigation. At this stage, we've got a lot of inquiries coming in locally. We've had a large number of children identified to us who may have been children at risk or children that people with on reflection are worried about and they've contacted us, for example, to say, you know, we had somebody living next door to us, you know, they weren't particularly well cared for, I wonder where they are, um, you know, you better check. So we're checking up on those sorts of um, uh, concerns as well and we've been able to eliminate um, 29 children from the investigation to date and even today there's detectives working on quite a number of other um, uh, children that people had concerns about. So I think we need to focus our investigation really on those children that are being identified at the moment, um, on the inquiries locally to try and pin down the quilt, 
the, the contents um, and other things that we're following up. So as we do that, we'll broaden the investigation, but um, at this stage we need to be certain what's occurred in our own backyard first. That person that you're speaking to that went through the suitcase and then zipped it back up, now what sort of things are you asking them at the moment? Is there any way that you know perhaps they saw the clothes in a better condition before it was sprawled out, or maybe there were clothes in there that were away or were taken away? Um, well, the, at, all we know at this stage, because that, that person's been spoken to at the moment, but that the case did appear to have a lot of clothing still in it. So, um, and again, that's a decent person um, who's seen it come forward um, and told us what they saw. Um, so somebody subsequent to that has tipped the contents out. And again, that's the person that we would like to come forward. Has DNA analysis confirmed beyond doubt that it is a girl? Uh, the DNA at the moment is incomplete, so um, I th think, as best uh, we can guess at the moment, we're probably looking at midweek or towards the end of the week, but it's, it's far from certain because it's being a very difficult process for them. What are some of the difficulties, I guess, associated with analysing the DNA? Um, I'm not a forensic scientist, but I'm told that given the degradation of the skeleton, um, and the age of the child and the development of the bones, that it makes the task more difficult. Are you liaising with any families of missing persons uh, around Australia? Um, we haven't been dealing with the families direct um, in other states because